Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chase tree and tractor service jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's your favorite time of the week. It's What's Up Time. I'm Larry Seidlinger. My, fa my favorite half hour. Yup, it's, it's at least Bobby's favorite half hour of the week. He gets to talk, and talk. He's the mayor of the mills, Bobby Weir. We got TV Toby here down on the floor. Dinah Dave, he's behind the camera. And Bobby, uh, if, if you're a basketball fan, it was a huge win. Yeah, give us a recap, Larry. Okay, Sandy Night, Oceanside, Madomic, yeah. boys and girls. It was Pink Night, Cancer Night yeah. at Madomic Valley. 1,500 people in the gym. They had to lock the gym, no more. There was above capacity, and then the toilets broke. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the highlight reel. That, that's the highlight reel because the hometown team, Madame, both teams played gallantly. Both games went down to the last two minutes, and Oceanside, to their credit, both championship teams yeah. went on 10 two runs, 13 two runs, and that was the ball game. Yeah. And then we killed, and we had, at that time, we had 1,500 people also watching us on the YouTube stream. Yeah. Plus, we don't know what was on the channel, but yeah. I'm sure there were several more watching there. And then Tuesday night, we had Lincoln Academy at Madomic. Yeah. Another full house, not quite as big as Saturday night, yeah. not quite as rowdy. They were pretty rowdy, but not quite as rowdy. And the toilets were working. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so that was a highlight yeah. of that night because almost identical kind of a game, both defensive battles. It was just a boys' varsity game. It wasn't girls involved. And Lincoln Academy, to their credit, they had lost by 10 over to Lincoln Academy. Right. And they, in the last two minutes, went on a 10-4 10, 10 run or something like that and won by, by, by a dozen. And uh, great ball games. Yeah. Um, both those teams will see each other in the tournament. And uh, I, I think some of the best basketball along the coast here is right here in the Damascot yeah. and Waldemar area. And right you folks Oceanside. get to see it. On LCTV. LCTV, that's right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be here through the end of the season, and then we uh, encourage you to go see our partners up in uh, WHOU because they'll oh, be yeah. they'll be streaming. You got it's ten bucks a month to watch the games, cheap yeah. enough, but uh, yeah. they do a great job up there. So uh, we're excited about it. So we got local news. We got our uh, our soup our A. OS 93 Superintendent Lindsey Johnson has decided that, to... Yeah, that kind of caught me by surprise. Yeah, yeah, I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. But anyway, I think it has to do with... Uh, it sounds like it has to do with family life, and uh, maybe she has another opportunity. Well, to her husband has a, is, is in business, and I think maybe he's pretty busy, but... Yep. Heck, that's a probably a pretty well, superintendent of school. That's oh. a pretty good paying job. Oh yeah, probably, I would think. So. And it's really pretty time consuming. Too. Oh, I would think. Yeah, I would think. You got to go to. I mean, just take all the school board meetings you have to go to. Oh my God! You know, every town's got stuff going on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. You, I, you anyway, talk got... about stuff going on. Did you see some of the increases in the school? Nova School went up like almost a half a million dollars. And, well, well uh, you know, the ambulance has gone up. The the schools have gone up. Our property taxes in Denver Scott have gone up. Mm -hmm. Insurance went up, and the property taxes mm -hmm. went up. I just we've got to come up with a better way to fund things. Yeah. Just we just got to. When people say why, how, I go right back to the municipal tax. You know, on goods and services. Yeah. You know, I hate taxes as much as the next guy, but you got to pay for this stuff. Well, I, I was saying to Larry off camera. You know, the, the governor gave the state of the state address a couple nights ago, and uh, she's. I mean, she's handing out millions and millions. I, you know, just in her address, she handed out thirty million dollars. You yeah. know, for mental health and a lot you know, of that is federal federal and, money, and that still comes from out of our taxes. Correct. Yeah. You know, but I, I am a firm believer that we need to look at we're a tourist-based in, industry, a mm -hmm. company, a stadia, and that to balance out the cost, 
we've got to charge the people that come here and enjoy our resources, mm -hmm. whether it be the coast or the mountains or the whatever, the fishing, yep. the hunting. Uh, now, if you put us a, a, a 1% fee on everything that goods and services, that balances it up and let that the municipal tax stay in the municipality where mm -hmm. that purchase of goods or services was. It's a simple thing, the tax. Yep. It's not that we have to reinvent it. It's a part of a sales tax, mm -hmm. you know, but that gives the towns the control of the money rather than the state. And I, another thing, I, I don't see a lot of money, you know, I mean, Lincoln County is a wonderful place to live. I don't see a lot of monies, you know, like the governor just mentioned $30 million. I don't see a lot of those monies come into this particular county. You know, it's, I don't know. I, maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, anyway. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, certainly there are counties that are far poorer than Lincoln County. Correct. Yeah. Uh, in land values, uh, right. certainly not what Lincoln County's are. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean Lincoln Ca County doesn't have some issues. And this is a little off sidebar, Bobby. I was talking to our friend Karen Ann yesterday, yep. you know, about her new navigator position yep. and whatnot. And I don't even know how it got onto it, but she was telling me that a couple of elderly ladies had some firewood, yep. you know, kept their home warm, and a couple of bandits backed up, mm -hmm. loaded their pickup, stole their firewood, and took off. Yeah. And the big tip of the cat to Todd Brackett and his staff over there, his crew, the sheriffs all chipped in, bought some firewood, mm -hmm. went and picked it up, brought it to the ladies' homes, and stacked it, the deputies. Yep. So there is my winner of the week right there, Bob. Right. The, the Lincoln County Sheriff's Department. Uh, that, that was a cool story. Now maybe we'll get a gift from our Savior. <laughs> They'll find the wood and yeah. bring it back to them. Yeah. And make the bandits <clears throat> stack the wood. Stack the wood, yeah, for next year. Yeah. That, that was a cool story. But, yeah, that is. You know, it's, the need is great here in Lincoln County in, in, yep. in certain areas. We don't necessarily see it yep. some days, but uh, it is what it is. Did sure. you see the piece on the lighthouse that they, they did? Boy, that was yeah, just just amazing. They got a on a 207 tonight. Tonight, I think they got a piece on all the lighthouses. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to mention, I'm sure, Pemaquid. Oh, but, sure. And yeah. uh, all the lighthouses are. Uh, but how about this all in the store, huh? <laughs> I'm going to uh, actually next week. My friend Connie, happy birthday, Connie, celebrating her 70th birthday. But anyway, so they wanted to go out to dinner with us, and we couldn't get into the all the store. Couldn't get in, didn't make yeah. your reservations time. Yeah, next Tuesday. So anyway, so we, uh, she, said the, she said that the parking's become an issue up there because there's no place to park. No place I mean, park. that parking lot holds about six cars, seven cars, and then... You don't you're, exactly you're the have shoulders up there. Exactly. You know, so, exactly. Anyway. I just met Jasper here back at. Uh, oh yeah. My my son and her were friends from from there. They'd worked together somewhere. I can't remember yeah, where. Gr but we went right. out for breakfast. What a great breakfast. Yeah. No, they're uh, they're doing it. You know, and they still have a restaurant in Scottsdale. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Unless they sold it, hmm. but that's where they that's where they you know they met and they ran the restaurant in Scottsdale, but. That Scottsdale was in their cup of I tea. I did not know that. They, she, Jasper always wanted to come back to Maine. Yeah. Talk about coming to Maine. How about Refart Zadie? Uh, he's now, Refart, a long way from home, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Refart, I'll tell you a funny, you know, there's a few inside stories about about what Larry and I know that isn't in the paper, but Refart, Refart came from Pakistan. Yeah. He was an orthopedic surgeon. And so anyway, when I was playing on the hockey team, we had Dr. White and Dr. Moran, who were both on our hockey team. And so they go to him to get put back together. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we, we had a we had a we had a, we were blessed with two orthopedic surgeons yeah. in our locker room. So anyway, but actually the fact of the matter was the orthopedic surgeons were in the roughest shape than anybody. <laughs> and so anyway, so Refot was coming to this country to interview for the job. And Dr. White Picked him up at the airport, and his first stop was the locker room up at Kennebec Valley Ice Arena. Oh, no kid! <laughs> and he came into the locker room, and I can't believe he still accepted the position yeah. after being in that locker room. But anyway, it's a great guy. He's an unbelievable, unbelievable photographer. So yeah, I've only I've only had one encounter with him. Yeah. I had to have a cortisone shot in yeah, my knee yeah, yeah. 25, 20 yeah. years ago, a long time ago. 
I said, that's enough of that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't realize how painful a cortisone shot could it be. Is. I don't think he did anything wrong. I just was like, that's enough of that, Doc. We yeah. ain't doing that again. Great Salt Bay is proving that they have a bunch of brainiacs there. Yeah, the um, kids are going to a book tournament. Yeah, I never heard of such a thing. Yeah, book tournaments are, uh, you know, I don't know if we would have had a book tournament when we were in that. Maybe that, uh, how many books we could carry might have been the tournament, yeah, not read. Yeah, or how many books we didn't carry. <laughs> how many yeah. books we didn't read, Bobby, yeah, would yeah. probably. <laughs> Actually, I always liked to read in high school. I still like to read, yeah. but I, I like to read like sports books and stuff yeah, or yeah. autobiographies. I like to read rock and roll books. You do? Yeah, yeah I read about yeah. rock stars, yeah. you know? Yeah. I got yeah. rock star envy is what I have. <laughs> so, you tried to be a rock star one time, yeah, didn't you? I'm still, On the party side of it. Still trying. <laughs> still trying. But how about this, uh, this guy, Michael Amico? Um, he's a, an archaeologist, and he's saying that Walderboro is Loaded a gold with mine for gold mine for, a stuff. Gold mine for broken dishes. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy. I mean, I kind of wonder about people. Their interest level is so peaked that they're digging through dirt for little tiny pieces of a coffee cup or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a, it takes different to, strokes for different it, folks, well, Bobby. You know, I know it takes them two and a half years to dig enough pieces <laughs> to glue them together <laughs> to get a half a cup. Oh, shoot. Down South Bristol, of course. You know, people, Where I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, this, they wanted to uh, develop an ordinance for the aquaculture industry down in South Bristol, meaning... You know, they want to control what goes on down there. But they had a big meeting down there. And a, a lady from uh, DMR, she was at the meeting and she said, basically, in the beginning, you can't really control the waters off the coast of Maine. Nope. And so, That's anyway. well, a state, that state mm -hmm. property. Yeah. But the, what the state does do is the, the state gives the town the authority to the low water mark. I know yep. that for a fact. Correct. But then they also give them the right of way for like uh, moorings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The towns negotiating. They yep. always have a harbor master tell you, you know, in permitting and that kind of thing. Uh, so that, that that's, she's right that the yep. state does own, but yep. they do do some exceptions to that. There are, like every rule, a few exceptions. Yeah. They do want to keep the uh, John Walker from South Bristol, he's just a resident. He wants, he, he still wants to keep the Aquaculture Committee together. And so. Well, I think that's I, not a bad move. No, really. No. Yeah, it's a good move. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I served on a committee, I wouldn't mind serving on like the clam committee here in Damascus or something yep. because I know a fair fair amount about the, the industry and the resource. So. So we got a new business owner in yeah, town. Yeah, I didn't know Suzanne was going to Montana. I didn't yeah. even know she was married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, if I find out something more about yeah. her. Yeah. So she's... anyway, the her neighbor, who is Mercedes Schweighauser, just because yeah, I, I know her. Do you know her? Yeah, I know her because yeah. she cuts my wife's hair. Oh, so, okay. So anyway, but Mercedes comes into the grill with her her fiancé, Jamie, and they, uh, she's a very nice girl. And so anyway, I wish her well with that. Yeah. So anyway, she's right next door. Yeah. How about was cast that they got a new interim principal? Yeah. Can you imagine? You talk about stepping into a bee's nest. Yeah. Because in the editorials, there's a resignation from a longtime teacher over there. Yeah. She laid it right out pretty clear. Yeah, she certainly did. <laughs> and she was, she was a what, teacher for 40 years? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And she says, you get rid of that principal, I'm out of here. And she did. Yeah. She made good on that one. Yeah, she but sure did. They also, was cast is going to have a special town meeting. So when you when you have a special town meeting, things are uh, not going too good, probably. Um, so it, it's all about lot size, setback requirements. You know, these towns, because, you know, of course, we're searching for affordable housing. These towns, you know, they have to look at their zoning. They have to create more space. Yeah. You know? And What's going on in Newcastle on the on the Mill Street there where the Rob Nelson wanted to put well, a place? Well, that's that's in progress. Is that still turning? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I think I think you'll find that's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, he's got a he's got a buddy who has got a very successful apartment complex and uh built and or pretty much ready to be in uh moved into. Well but, Rob's a pretty smart guy yeah. and and I would think that he had researched Oh yeah. That pretty 
pretty clearly yeah. before he even brought it to the table. Yeah, well, he owned the house he, to right. the left. And plus, he's time. been on the select board, so yeah. he understands how that all works. Yeah. <laughs> he knows the game? He knows yeah. the game. That's yeah. right. He knows the rules of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> So, Sarah Hubert, you've got your work cut out for you over there. Yeah. You know, her toughest job will be just mending the hard feelings. Yeah. That's, that's a tough Yeah, it's already, I mean, that's you've tough already game. got a divided situation. Really tough. And, uh, but anyway, these kids at the elementary school there, they don't care about it. They don't care who's no. principal. They're sending no. Valentine's to soldiers. Yeah. I mean, that, to me, is what it's all about. I think you, you might have had to wear a hard hat, though, in that Wiscasha school system. For, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. As long as they get the Valentines out. Right, get the Valentines out. Yeah. So anyway, the uh, with Gualdabar's Torkel Society, the, uh, I don't know what this could be. Um, I got no idea. Yeah. So anyway, the uh, Jay Darling of Jefferson, he, he, co he guessed last week and it was a Civil War era ear trumpet. So anyway, if you had a, be, that was pre-hearing aids, so they put a trumpet up to your ear so you could hear your wife yelling at you. Huh. Why would I want to do that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> why would you want to do that? Yeah, that's why they went. <laughs> that's why, why would we want to do that? That's why they don't have them anymore. Oh, that's right. That's, yeah. There was not enough demand yeah. for that product. So anyway, now the excuse is I need a new battery. <laughs> so how about Neil Lash? I uh, did a show years ago with Neil Lash down at Madomic Valley, and he's got this heirloom project that is just unbelievable. His tomatoes are like something you've never seen in your life. And he gets the kids so, he's got a knack for... He's a natural born teacher. Yeah. He really he's is. Got a, folks, this guy's got a knack for keeping kids interested in things you would never, ever dream I mean, what kid, 16 years old, cares about, know tomatoes. about growing tomatoes? They don't. But with Neil, he loves it. We, so. uh, Neil and I, and he's a brilliant basketball technician. Yeah. He knows the game of basketball yeah. inside yeah. and out, knows how to teach it. That's why he was such a successful coach. Uh, and uh, he and I did a lot of broadcast together back in the 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, and his grandson's the big star on the team. Yes, he is. Yeah. And uh, Neil's just a, just a fine human being. So we got a 95th birthday from Agnes Crockett, February 3rd, coming yeah. up. And uh, it's going to be, they're throwing, a, they're throwing a bash for her. Yeah, sounds 18, like. 18, 12 firm, 1 to 5, April, April, February 3rd. So I called Larry last night because I called Julie Kaiser about the Walderboro Community Center and New Main Health Site, which has got a lot of excitement going yeah. on. And uh, the hospital is excited. They're going to have a... You know, health center there. But my question was, and I called Julie up, but I didn't hear back from her. Was, she didn't respond to you? No. What's so going on? I, what's a medical arts facility? And so, anyway, so Larry explained to me a little bit about it. I thought it was a, a walk-in clinic that had artwork on the ceiling. No, you know? I don't believe so. No? No, I don't so, believe so. Anyway, main health building. So, anyway. The, you know, it's recreation, child care, all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, we got on. a police detective was cleared of, uh, you know, poor, these poor police officers, you know, they get calls, they show up, they don't know what they're in for. Oh, God. And no. so anyway, this one gentleman uh, in, uh, showed up, uh, Scott Duff showed up at a call, and the guy pulled a knife, and, you know, he had no choice. He had to defend himself. So anyway, they've cleared him about that, and... Uh, Anyway, I mentioned a little earlier that Nobleboro, they have a $5 million school budget. Now, Nobleboro, I think we're looking at 1,500 people in Nobleboro. Yeah. And How many a, kids are you looking at? 100? I, I don't, Is there 100? I don't know. It's got to be more than that. <laughs> but, you know, that's the same thing in Great Salt Bay, but there's not that many kids that go there. But if you look at the traffic before... Might as well do away the school buses because there's so many cars lined yeah. up there to pick and take the kids out. Well, in this day and age... I don't know. Would I put my kid on a school bus? I don't know. I don't know. First of all, there's a shortage of school bus drivers. You don't know how experienced those drivers are, the ones that are driving you. Yeah, I you don't know. know. So, yeah, yeah well, the... the I, I'm going to come to their defense. They have to take a test past that. They have to be able to pass oh, yeah. the school bus. Yeah. And but, the school buses never reach a big high speed or anything like that. It's not like they're doing, going down the interstate yeah. 80 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. You know, they went around town 40 miles an hour. But folks, end. if you want to see what Larry's talking about, you go over to the Great Top Bay oh. School at 
It's you crazy. Have, there must be 40 cars oh, lined up. Oh, at least. To get into the school. Uh, they're lined up from Great Salt Bay all the way back to the Legion. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of times there's two or three deep Both in the sides. Legion. Both sides of the road. North and yeah. south. Yeah. <laughs> and I understand, I was talking to uh, Mark Hager the other day, and they're talking about maybe redoing some of the parking lot there in Great Salt Bay and move the buses somewhere else. And, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Well, they could fill in that pond. That's Well, they can't <laughs> fill the pond in. No? No, because there's uh, the green-eyed, cross-eyed frog is in there. Oh, yeah. And he's an endangered species, so you right. can't do that. Right. And his brother, Leo the Lip Lizard, is yep. not is in right. there, too. Okay. He may be extinct, so you can't, can't fill that okay. pond in. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, environment. I just want to make clear that uh, up. Environmentalists have their say. <clears throat> well, that's they right. They do. That's right. So, the, uh, anyway, the uh, committee that's going to be set up to to replace Lindsey Johnston is, um, you know, the uh, they're going to have to set up a committee, and they're not wasting any time. They don't want to. No. I, I didn't know. I didn't read the whole article. When is she getting done? She June. Going, June. Yeah. yeah. And Matt Hanley. Who's the head of the AOS school board? He's stepping down as head of the. He's going to stay on the school board. But he's but not he's, going to be chair. Correct. Yeah. So, or he's going to not be. He's going to be chair of the of the AS ninety three board. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because so there's a there's an AS ninety three board. Then there's each school has their own correct school board too. <laughs> Whatever happened to that binder, bra binder there or whatever? Do you ever hear? No. Does that one turn maybe, into in the maybe courts? Maybe set a lot of court, maybe. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah. I hope it's settled. Well, it'll never be settled. Never be settled. Yeah. <clears throat> because these people, they all need to go up to the Whitefield Library because on February 6th, they got a stress reduction class up there, you know? Well, I might go just for yeah. the heck of it. I might go... Just to see who's there. Yeah. <laughs> see who's stressed out. Yeah. 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 A lot of people <clears throat> hide their stress. I don't want to get into that. But anyway, the uh, we got a Valentine's Day concert with the Halley Con String Quartet. These are four qualified musicians. Davis sisters. Um, it's uh, That's Chris it's Davis's daughter. Chris that Davis's thing? daughter, Sophie yeah. and Josie. And... Uh, we got another guy, um, Ju Young Lee, and he plays the cello. And then we have another guy who plays the viola. I yeah. Think. So, anyway. You going to that gospel concert? Alan Frank, he's going to be at the North Walterboro Church. Yeah. So, February 4th, Sunday, this coming Sunday. Yep, yeah, Catherine Lyon. <clears throat> good for her. She, she, Catherine Lyon's, I think that's Dr. Lyon's wife. She... Uh, Took a picture of a bluebird. I was telling, I think I told you a few months ago, I've had bluebirds on my beard feeder. Never in my life have huh. I seen a bluebird on a bird feeder. They're there all the time. And I live right around the corner from her. Yeah. Somebody wrote an editorial. I don't know who writes them over there now. But, but I, I mean, we had people falling through. That's too tragic, that guy. Oh, the poor guy. Carmel. Town manager in but Carmel. But geez, what are you doing walking with your kid on the ice? Yeah. You're supposed to be a smart guy. Yeah. There's no ice, mm -hmm. you know? It's, all you do is hang around a little bit, you know, yeah, there's was, no ice. It was so tragic because he was there with his four-year-old son. He, they both fell through, he got, and he saved got the, kid. the son out, but he didn't make it. Yeah. And uh, so that's a real tragedy for a small town up in, yeah. up by... Uh, yeah, worker bees are mm -hmm. hard to find. Yeah, so... Somebody right. got 235. The Maine's first conditional is they're going to share 235000 National yeah. Endowment for the Arts. Don't forget, folks. Chamber Fest, Salt Bay Chamber Fest got twenty grand. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Noble Historical Society, of course, they give out thousand dollar scholarships every year. And uh, you can apply for those scholarships now, right now, folks. If you if you live in Noble, you're going on to continuing education and you can apply for those through the historical society. <clears throat> Maybe they'll donate something to watch up. We educate them every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Well, we got to keep wait. going, Bobby, because I want to talk about Calvin all his boats here. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a wicked... In I didn't read the whole thing, but I'm going to go back to it with all these ships that there was now built. Now, that building, is that where Schooner Landing was? That was where Schooner was, yeah, I think. I believe. Yeah. 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 And imagine cutting ice out of the back river there so they could launch a boat. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you're looking right at the back of the fish market. Jonah D. Morse. Yeah. He was the builder of these three... Picture of these three boats. And then Harry Mann's shipyard there. Yeah. That right. was quite a name, Harry Mann. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. 
Hmm. Pretty interesting, I thought. Calvin always, gee, he always comes up with such a great article. There's a big correction in there for Calvin's article. I really didn't read it because I, yeah. I don't think, I, you know. I, we just I, don't think he's wrong. I just don't, yeah, I don't think Calvin makes any. Yeah. Uh, we lost our friend Darcy Boyd Austin the other day. Yeah, yes. yeah. Frank DiGregorio, Tony Frank. DiGregorio. Yeah, yeah. I don't know him, but I did know Dick Kubek used to be my neighbor back oh, in the 70s. Yeah. 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 Barbara Warner. Barbara a, Warner. I didn't know she lived in the mills. Yeah, she, she did. She's up by your house there yeah, somewhere. She lives in that big barn, juts out over the water. She goes to Florida in the wintertime. Oh, she did? Yeah. Oh, Hollis Nelson's yeah, old Oh, right. I didn't know that. Yeah. I always wondered who lived there. Yeah. Huh, yeah. Picture of my dad's best friend, Niven Chapman, Niven Helen. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. Well, South Bristol, their budget's up. 10% almost. They'll never catch up with us. No. <laughs> they, got, they got plenty of money down yeah, there. Yeah, right. The, uh, anyway, Memorial Day weekend, Bristol History Center is going to reopen. And uh, you want to see your Bristol history, folks, because they've been working on this forever and ever. Um, anyway, Bob Stenick, famous uh, marine biologist, he's, uh, he, he's been recognized uh, by the, he's retired now, but he's recognized for advancing the scientific understanding and conservation of marine ecosystems. Yeah. <laughs> big, big half-page article there, a thank you for the town of Bristol. Yep. Another kid got a hundred wins there, Adam St. Cyr. Yeah? Yeah. Well, and his, uh, his, his father, Sean, is the Lincoln Academy's coach. wrestling coach, and he was named Coach the Year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sean's been working, he works with young kids 12 months a year. Yeah. You know, he's... He and that kid, Nathan Gash, from Madomic, he got his hundredth win. He was he was a stalwart on the yeah. defensive side of the ball for Madomic Valley football this year. I had Adam St. Cyr here in the studio when he was about 10 years old, and the trophies yeah. he had were bigger than him. <laughs> cool beans. Well, Bobby, we're getting down here. You know, we was worried about this paper, whether we was going to get through it or not. But uh, we're down to the last minute, folks, here, and uh, we're still struggling to come up with something interesting to tell you about outside of the highlight, the water being shut off here at the Madomic Valley gym. Or not shut off, run out, whatever it was. Well, I want to thank a couple of the banks that I know. You know um, a couple of banks? A couple of the banks I know. I was in you there. You must have money. I was doing my uh, my chamber uh, pamphlet duty oh, for yeah. the Mill Pond Inn. Yeah. And uh, the gal from the fir um, First Federal Savings come in. She got a stack of those decals. Oh, yeah. And she, the bank bought 100 of them. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and to give them out to their customers. Cool. So I said, that's that's a great idea. Yeah. So I went over to Jeff's day, and I said, Jeff, I got a good idea for you. And I gave her one of those decals, and I said, this bank should buy a bunch of these decals. And they went over and bought some decals. So they might. We sold a lot. I don't know what, I'll know tomorrow morning because we're going to have the final tally. But, yeah. You know, not a final tally, but we're going to come up with, we raised a lot of money for the for the organization. I'm not exactly sure we're yeah. going to give it to them, but there's enough need out there. Yeah, I got a couple t-shirts. I'm sending them down to my friends, Ron and Peggy. They're going to be re receiving a couple of uh, Midcoast Strong t-shirts. Yep. Yep. So, nice design. Good stuff. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for What's Up this week. I'm Larry Seidling and the Mayor of the Mills right here, Dinah Dave behind the camera. TV Toby, you want to say goodbye? You want to say goodbye? No, don't want to say goodbye this way. <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. Have a good time. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you. Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chasetreeattractorservice.jc at gmail.com.